we found out in our previous lecture how to find out the mean if a discrete set of data is given to us. That is with the help of direct method or the shortcut method. Now, what do you think will happen if we have been given data in groups or classes? So obviously, in that case, we cannot consider a particular variate with which to multiply frequency. So what do we do in the case where classes have been provided to us? So now, when we have classes provided to us, we apply a somewhat different technique. This technique is applied with the help of class mark represented as yi. What is the class mark? The class mark of a class is a value which represents the entire class. So for ease of calculation, the class mark is taken to be the average of the upper limit and the lower limit. So in this case, the average will be 0 plus 10 divided by 2. That is, 5 will be the class mark for the first class. In a similar manner, for the second class, if we do 20 plus 10 divided by 2, it gives us 30 by 2, which is 15. So the class mark is 15. In a similar manner, we calculate the class marks for the rest of the classes. And thus we find that these values represent yi. That is each occurrence. This is y1, this is y2, this is y3, and so on. And we have the frequency column, as you can see. So now we simply multiply yi with fi. That is, we multiply each occurrence of class mark with each occurrence of, with the corresponding occurrence of frequency. So I multiply 5 with 3, and I get 15. It is simply a multiplication of each occurrence of class mark and the corresponding occurrence of frequency. So 15 into 5 gives me 75. 25 into 6 gives me 150. 35 into 8 gives me 280. 45 into 3 gives me 135. Thus, we have the completed table as you can see on the board. Now from this, we can find out the mean very easily. How? We sum up the FIYI column and we sum up the frequency or the FI column. And the mean will be given by sigma FIYI, that is the sum total of this column, divided by sigma FI, the sum total of this particular column. So let us first add up the frequency column. It will be 5 plus 3, which is 8, plus 6, 14, plus 8, 22, plus 3, 25. Now we add up the column FIYI. So when I add up this column, I will get a value 655. You can add it yourself and find out that the value corresponds to 655. Thus, the mean will be nothing but 655 divided by 25, and from which we get a value of 26.2. Thus, the mean, with the help of this method, which is known as the direct method, is obtained to be 26.2. Now, if you observe closely, you will find that you had to add certain large numbers over here. 150 plus 280 plus 135 gave us pretty large numbers and even the sum total was a quite large number, 655. So obviously adding large numbers and then manipulating them is a quite difficult task. This is the reason why we employ another method. So let us find out what happens in this method. Again in this case, we find out the class mark for the respective classes. So for the first class, it will be 5. For the second class, it will be 15. For the third class, 25. For the fourth, 35. And for the last class, 45. Now I have to find out a quantity called di. That is nothing but yi, that is the class mark, minus a. 
that is the assumed mean so in this case the assumed mean how can we find out over here from the class mark i consider the middle value to be the assumed mean so in this case let us say i consider 25 to be the assumed mean so how can i calculate the values of di for the first class di will be yi that is 5 minus a that is 25 that is minus 20 for the second case it will be 15 minus 25 that is minus 10 for this case it will be 25 minus 25 because 25 itself is the assumed mean for the next case it will be 35 minus 25 10 and for this case 20 now as you can see we have to deal with quite small numbers so now i multiply di with fi and get a column fi di so as you can see the multiplication involved now is quite simple minus 20 into 3 is minus 60 minus 10 into 5 is minus 50 0 into 6 is 0 10 into 8 is 80 20 into 3 is 60 so now i have filled up the table completely so now if you add up the column of fi you will get 25 and if you add up the column fi di you get 30 so as you can see as compared to the previous case where we were dealing with 655 a large three digit number over here we are dealing with only 30 this method is known as the shortcut method and quite rightly so because it greatly reduces the time for calculation and how can we find out the mean with the help of shortcut method this is the formula to help us find the mean with the help of shortcut method so i simply add a which is 25 the assume mean plus sigma fidi which is 30 divided by sigma fi that is 25 and this gives me the mean so if i take the common factor 5 i can simply perform this division this will give me 25 plus 6 by 5 which is 1.2 and thus we get 26.2 just like we had got in the previous case with the help of direct method so as you can see no hefty calculations are involved in this method and thus it is known as the shortcut method now we talk about another method which might prove to be an even easier method so over here firstly again we calculate the class mark so it will be 5 15 25 35 45. Now we are introducing another quantity which is known as ui. What is ui? ui is equal to yi minus a. a is the assumed mean which is again 25 divided by c. Now yi is the class mark. a is the assumed mean. c is nothing but the class width or the class size so in this case c is equal to 10 as you can clearly see from the classes given to us so let us find out how we can calculate the value of ui so for example the first class yi is 5 minus a which is 25 divided by c that is 10 so 5 minus 25 is minus 20 divided by 10 which gives me a value of minus 2. Similarly, for the next class, I perform 5 minus 15 divided by 10. This gives me minus 10 divided by 10, which is nothing but minus 1. For this case, since yi minus a is 0, thus ui is also 0. For the next case, what will I have? 35 minus 25, that is 10, divided by 10, 1. 
And similarly, for the last class, I will get ui equal to 2. So now if you observe closely, I have obtained even smaller values as compared to the shortcut method. So now I simply multiply each occurrence of ui with its corresponding occurrence of fi. And thus I get a new column, fi ui. So as you can see, it involves the multiplication of one digit numbers. Minus 2 into minus 3, minus 6, minus 1 into 5, minus 5. Over here, minus 2 into 3 gave me minus 6 because there was a negative number being multiplied with a positive number. Minus 1 was being multiplied with 5, so it resulted in minus 5. Similarly, 0 into 6 is 0, 1 into 8 is 8, and 2 into 3 is 6. Thus, again I add up the column fi and the column fi ui. This method is known as the step deviation method. The step deviation method, as you can see, involves even smaller numbers as compared to the shortcut method or even the direct method. So how can I now find out the mean with the help of step deviation method? I can find out the mean with the help of this particular formula. That is A, the assume mean plus C into sigma fi ui divided by sigma fi. So sigma fi ui, that is the summation of the fi ui column is equal to 3. And the summation of the frequency column, sigma fi, is equal to 25. So what do I get? I get 25, that is the assume mean, plus 10 into 3 by 25. So what will happen if I simplify this further? If I further simplify this, I can take out a factor of 5 common. So taking the common factor 5, I get again 25 plus 6 by 5. And what is 6 by 5? 1.2. So 25 plus 1.2 gives me 26.2, which is the mean that I had obtained in the previous two cases as well. So as you can see, in the step deviation method, I am dealing with even smaller numbers. That is a single digit number 3 and 25. So it is an easier method as compared to shortcut method or even the direct method. So now again you will argue that through direct method the formula that we had obtained is sigma fi yi divided by sigma fi. And when we are applying the formula for mean with the help of step deviation method, it seems to be distinctly different from the previous formula. So let us see how we can relate these two formulas and whether at all they are the same or not. So in order to do so, firstly, I will replace ui with its formula, that is yi minus a divided by c. So on rewriting this equation, with the help of this value for ui, I obtain mean as a plus c into sigma fi whole multiplied by yi minus a by c whole divided by sigma fi. So again, I rewrite the equation for your convenience. Now let us see how I can manipulate this equation to obtain the equation for direct method. So I simplify and rewrite the same equation. C into, I open the brackets, sigma fi yi minus sigma fi a, which is divided by C, whole divided by sigma fi. So this is what I'm getting. Now, as you can see, C lies on the denominator for this particular fraction. And this is the numerator for the bigger fraction, which has denominator as sigma fi. So what can I do? I can further simplify it and write sigma fi yi minus sigma fi a divided by c multiplied by sigma fi. 
So this is the equation I'm getting after simplification. So now if you observe, you will find that C is a term that is present in the denominator as well as in the numerator. So if I am to take partial fractions inside this bracket, what will I get? I will get sigma fi yi divided by C sigma fi minus sigma fi into A divided by C sigma fi. So this is what I get once I break it into partial fractions. Now you will observe I open the bracket and I multiply C. So as you can see C is common in the numerator and denominator for the first term. Also C is common in the numerator and denominator in the second term. So I can easily cancel out the C. So once I cancel out C, what am I left with? I am left with in the first case sigma fi yi by sigma fi and in the second case sigma fi a divided by sigma fi. Now if you remember a is a constant and a single value. So its presence inside sigma is of no significance. Thus since a is a constant I can cancel out sigma fi from the numerator and denominator as well. This will give me nothing but a plus sigma fi yi by sigma fi minus a which I obtained from this particular term. So now as you can see a is present both in the positive and negative in the same equation I can cancel out a and I will be left with sigma fi yi divided by sigma fi which is the mean and as you can see this formula is the same formula as we had obtained and used in the case of direct method. So we can say that these formulas are one and the same and are interrelated by different values like di or ui as the method which we are applying. So how is the value of mean helpful to us? How can we interpret mean to give it some meaning? Now mean can be used in several cases. Mean can be used to see the average marks of the class to determine how well the class has performed on an average. Mean can also be used in the mess of schools and colleges in order to avoid food wastage. Why? Because if we can calculate the average food consumed per day or the mean food consumed per day, we can tell the people running the schools and colleges to provide food to the students in exactly that amount. And this will actually help minimize the food wastage in schools and colleges messes. So this is how the value mean is helpful to us.